Welcome to Patching for Microsoft SQL Server in BDA. In this video, we will cover preparing downloaded SQL Server patch media for use in BDA and creating a BDA patch package. First, let's look at downloading and preparing SQL Server patch media for use in BDA. Microsoft provides all of its patch media online. Some of it, like service packs, can be directly downloaded from the web, while other patches, like cumulative updates, require that you request the media by mail. For instance, to obtain this cumulative update to SQL Server 2008 Service Pack 1, I needed to give my email address to Microsoft and then download the media via the link in the email Microsoft sent me. In some cases, the email will provide time-sensitive passwords that are necessary to unpack the patch media. When you download the patch media, take a close look at the file you downloaded. If it has an icon indicating that it's a zip file and it contains the word zip in the file name, then this media is really an archive that needs to be unpacked before BDA can use it. If the mail you received contains a password, this is the time that you would be prompted to enter it. Once you've extracted the patch media, you'll find that you have an executable file that references the SQL Server version, the KB article for the patch you're applying, whether or not the patch is for 32-bit or 64-bit SQL Server, but most importantly, it won't say that it's a self-extracting zip file. Now that we've prepared the media we downloaded from Microsoft, let's use it to create a SQL Server patch package in BDA. To do this, we log into the BDA GUI, open the Patching Context, and select Patch Repository. This will bring us to the Patch Repository screen, where we can select Create New Package to, well, create a new patch package. The first thing we will be prompted for is what type of database this patch package will be for. We'll select Microsoft SQL Server and then move on to the Patch File Upload widget. Remember, we're not uploading the self-extracting zip file that we downloaded from Microsoft we're uploading the patch installer that we got when we ran the self-extracting zip file. Once we've specified the file to upload, we can hit Next to actually upload the file, and once it's done uploading, we'll find ourselves at the Package Settings screen. First, let's go back to the web page we requested the patch from and copy the name of the patch directly from the website and paste it into the description for the patch package. Then we can go to the package name and provide a shorter name that still lets us see what the patch package contains. Let's make this patch contained by the root of the BDA grid so it's available everywhere, and then hit next. The MS patch ID contains the version number that this patch will update Microsoft SQL Server to. And to authoritatively determine this, we need to again refer to the KB article that announced the patch. Here we can see that this cumulative update package is also known as build 10.00.2710. It's important that we refer to the KB article, because if we examine the version of the patch installer itself, we discover that it claims to be version 10.1.2710. We don't know why Microsoft uses this different version number for the patch installer, but when you actually apply this patch to a SQL Server 2008 instance, the instance will report that it is now running version 10.00.2710. BDA isn't interested in the version number that the patch installer is labeled with. It's only concerned with what version number the SQL Server instance will report once the patch has been applied. And this is the number that's reported in the KB article associated with the patch. So, whenever you're creating a SQL Server patch package, Copy the version number directly from the KB article into the patch package. Don't bother examining the properties of the patch installer. Now that we set the MS patch ID, we can also tell BDA that because this is a cumulative update, it will be able to roll the patch back, and we can move on. This brings us to the package target screen. Because SQL Server 2008 only runs on Windows Server 2003 or later, we don't want to even consider applying this patch to target hosts that are running Windows XP or Windows Server 2000. But there are these two Windows Server 2003 versions sitting over here in the Available section, so let's move them over to Selected so we consider them as potential targets. 
You can see that a 64-bit architecture has already been selected, so we don't need to make a change there. So all that's left for us to do is scroll through the target applications and find SQL Server 2008 SP1, and there it is. We move that over to selected, and we can go on to the next screen. Now we're at the package script screen. Since you've already seen the patching overview video, you know when each of these scripts is run, so I'm going to show you a trick. The simplest package script you can include in a patch package is a batch file with one command in it, set. When this package script is run, it will dump all the environment variables that BDA defines to standard out, which will allow us to examine them and remind ourselves exactly what environment variables are defined for each of these phases. Since we want to run this script for all of the install script phases, we're going to upload it into each of them. We can also upload additional files into the patch package, but since our package scripts are just a one-line dummy script, we don't really need to upload anything to support them. We'll play with these later in the video. This brings us to the review screen. Here we can see that we're creating a Microsoft SQL Server patch package with the patch file media we just extracted. We've provided a reasonable name for the package, so we'll later be able to determine what patch it contains. It's got the proper MS patch ID. BDA knows we can roll the patch back. It's got a list of operating system targets that match the list of operating system versions that SQL Server 2008 can run on. We're only going to apply this to 64-bit instances of SQL Server 2008 SP1. And we're going to run the same dummy script in each of the four installation script slots. So let's create the patch. First, BDA does some init verify tests. These tests are basically little sanity checks. Did we actually upload the patch media? Did we actually upload the patching scripts we said we did? And we said this is a SQL Server 2008 patch, so did we specify only SQL Server 2008 applications in the target list? Once the init verify tests are done, BDA actually creates the patch package. And that's it. Thank you for watching Patching for Microsoft SQL Server in BDA, and have a nice day.